Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of Peter Township Council to order for Monday, August 22nd, 2022. Mr. Lauer, Mr. Chair, call, please. Ms. Shanafel? Here. Dr. Prosco? Here. Mr. Curry? Here. Mr. Seigel? Present. Mr. Kozer? Here. Mr. Lewis? Here. Mr. Rouse? Here. Okay, all rise for pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first item on the agenda will be the approval of the minutes from the August State. So moved. moved. Second. Okay, motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 7 nothing. Next up, we have a special report. We're going to take a, a minute here to uh, acknowledge the Peter Township High School dance team for their uh, recent uh, national title. and. Uh, to start off, I'd like to call up Ms. Nika Schuster, who's the, the head coach of the team. Yeah. 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 If you just want to take take a couple minutes to explain the you know the journey to where they, where we are now, and we have a gift for all the ladies here, and a big one for you. Oh, Hang up in your house. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, first, I just wanted to say thank you for having us. Um, we really feel appreciative of you guys inviting us in and acknowledging our girls and their hard work. Um, this is our 18th season uh, as a team, and my mother and I started the team 18 long years ago. It's been a long journey. Um, this is our third national championship, but uh, just to explain, we do a couple local competitions, regional competitions, um, a couple performances, but our big thing at the end of the year is our national championship where we compete um, against teams from all over the country. It is basically the Super Bowl of dance, of high school dance. So um, we work really hard, we work with lots of people throughout the country, so it's a big honor and uh, we, we do appreciate you all recognizing us. Where so, was this event held? Orlando, Florida. Okay. Disney World. <laughs> oh, that's nice. It's very nice. I'm sure it was hot, but it was nice. <laughs> yes. It was hot and rainy, but it was nice. no, we have a couple other uh, individuals that would like to recognize the team as well. This is Natalie Mihalik, representative of the state of Pennsylvania. Thank you. I just want to say congratulations to each and every one of the girls. I uh, had a moment to speak with the coaching staff. I know that it wasn't an easy 18 years, but it must be a testament to your hard work and the quality of, of the girls and all of their hard work and perseverance throughout those years that you've been able to go to national three times. I think that's just amazing. Um, and you have everybody here from the community that they're just so proud of you representing your township in that way. And I think that's just amazing. And nothing worth doing, um, you know, if it's, if it's on par, it's not, it's not worth doing. So each and every one of you girls, while you have the, the coaches and you have the community behind you, it was within each and every one of you to go and carry the team through. So I just want to say on behalf of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, congratulations to each and every one of you. Congratulations to your coaches, your community is very, very proud of you. And I want to give you this citation. I'm going to your coach, that's okay. Then I'm going to away from the microphone. With your, I don't know how big of a trophy you got, I have. <laughs> 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 Are you next to work for one of Congratulations, too. I bet she knows all the moves. <laughs> <laughs> We have somebody from Dublin Robinson's office, Senator Robinson. Yes. On behalf of Senator Robinson and uh, 37th District, I want to say congratulations to everybody here. Um, as a PT alum uh, myself, so congratulations, girls, for all your hard work. Also to the coaches, obviously, Mrs. Delir over there. She was actually my teacher back in the day. Um, you know, starting to you know date ourselves, you know, even more so with myself. I can't see you as a dance student. I love to say. <laughs> so congratulations, obviously, to the coaches for your your dedication to the girls and all the time and effort that you put in, and also to the parents. Um, obviously, there's a lot of time, uh, emotional, I'm sure, things that go on with the girls. Um, money, everything that, that, that comes with it. Um, so I'm sure that they're very appreciative of your time and your efforts as well. So again, on behalf of Senator Robinson and on behalf of the State Senate of Pennsylvania, congratulations very much. And I also have a citation here for you. So. Uh, 
and <laughs> so as I mentioned, we have a little gift for Unica and for all the girls. We have a uh, little memento. If you want to list our names, and we can uh, hand them. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah. You can put your stuff in. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, Kaylee Morgan, Maddie Saborski, Taylor Ayala, Delaney Gator, and Gabby Kakuna. And we have two seniors that have already gone off to college who obviously think you could not be here. Yeah. I'm going to put this in the other one sooner than you want to handle this out. Again, congratulations on behalf of Peter Scout. Thank you, thank you. We're making a pyramid back here. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's going to be on top, but it's going to be me. Yeah. Paramedics. 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 I think they just gave up to Jake Kelly. You know, put it out. You know, put it out in the top. That one's too early to get to the high school. Does you want to move the, uh, oh, move the five minute time remaining thing? Yeah. Uh, maybe they get up and bother. It's missing. There's a whole bunch of All right, next slide will be audience comments. This is an opportunity for any members of the audience to address council on a non-agenda item. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to unfinished. I thought he was getting up to speak. Oh, okay, yeah. No, he's going to shut the door. Uh, I was curious. Could you, could you write your name and address on that? Yeah. Steve Brands, 838 East McMurray Road. The house that had all, all torn up today. They were digging for... Eight hours to find my shut off for the gas line. Mm -hmm. That was pretty, pretty much a mess. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Um, I was just going to ask about the dam. I don't know if any other decisions have been made. Can you hear me, okay on this? Yeah. Um, I don't know if any other, if we're talking any more about that, I haven't heard anything more about it since. Yeah, I don't believe there's been any ago. updates since. Well, we just, I'm we not just, rushing for something to happen. I'm just wondering well, where we're going with this. Well, we just did a report on this, and, and uh, where this is right now is it's sitting with DEP. Um, they have our alter alternatives analysis, and um, uh, DEP to respond to us as to which of the alternatives they're going to be willing to accept. So that's where it's sitting right now. So we have an application out right now, a grant application for funding for the engineering needed to design whatever that, that alternative is. Um, we should be hearing back on that before the year's end, but um, right now the ball's in DEP's court. It's my understanding that there's, and I've never heard of this before, that there's a possibility you can get a variance from this this regulation that the actual company that that did the study is actually saying they work with other states to get variances from their their own study um, and if we looked into that at all is there I, I wouldn't call it a variance but okay. um, the way these precipitation studies go is you know there's a statewide study and you know, depending on where you live in the state and the size of your watershed there's a design storm We've been in touch with the company, and uh, you know there, there's different ways to come up with these design storms. I, I, in talking to them, I, I don't think it's, there's a very good prospect of lowering the amount of rainfall that we have to design for. Um, you know, the, the, the study seems to be pretty 
pretty locked in. Like I, I don't think there's a there's a high percentage chance that, that there's going to be a lesser design storm. And there was supposed to be something like a probability study. I mean, come on now, 17 inches of rain in two hours is unbelievable, and impossible. You know, it's never well, going to happen. I, I would. No, it's never going to happen. There should be something other than you know. Again, I'm not the expert here. I'm just wondering if we've gone any further with that. If we could look into that. I mean, we had our representatives here. We had Natalie Mihalik and, and uh, Senator um, Robinson's, uh, uh, you know, rep here. Did we talk to them at all? Are they giving us any assistance here to, to push back on the, I mean, I don't think we should just roll over on this. This is ridiculous regulations. I mean, they're asking, they're doing this all around the country. I mean, I studied into it a little bit more. They're, they were bragging about how they closed down 63 dams, how they destroyed 63 dams across the country. There's organizations whose goal it is, they're environmentalists. They don't like dams, they want water to be free. They said that these dams hurt the fish and, and they want dams destroyed. So they have an agenda and they're moving on that agenda and they can use studies like this. Now we're, we might be able to afford it, but you know, other communities might not be able to afford it, and their dams are destroyed. So, I really think we should, you know, push back on this and try to try to find the barriers, try to lead the way instead of just rolling over on this. Well, I, and I would disagree with your your characterization that we're rolling over because the fact of the matter is the reason why there was another study done in the state of Pennsylvania was Peter Township and another a number of other dam owners asked for that be done and pointed to that. The other thing is the motivation of DEP is not to open up uh, waterways um, for some environmental issue. The concern in the state of Pennsylvania is that there are so many earthen dams. And unlike our earthen dam, which is well maintained, so many of them aren't. And that's what's got DEP motivated uh, to do something because there's a real concern about the impact of high hazard dams and their failures. So, you know, I think what we have been doing up to this point has been taking a responsible look at this uh, in, in terms of that. I would agree with, with uh, Mr. Zemitis in terms of having looked at what is in that study and where you would have to get to in terms of reducing the, the level of, of maximum precipitation. It would have to be such a quantum leap in terms of that reduction before you have a significant impact on the size of this project. So if council wants, we can expend public funds for the purpose of, of doing our own study, but I'm gonna tell you when you're done, don't be surprised that even if it reduces it, it doesn't reduce it significantly and you'll be exactly where you are today. And you have to get DEP to accept that study results too. Well, if we were to use the same consultant that they used, I would think it would be an easy sell if, if there's a favorable Result. I, I think the problem, though, yeah, yeah. the problem is, uh, you know, the 17.5, you know, the, the chances, like Paul said, of you getting anything significantly less than that, like you'd have to get it down to like half of that to have, a, to have a, a, an impact on, you know, the dam project itself. Um, going from 17.5 to 16.8, it's not going to do you anything. We're down to 14 or 13. It's not going, to, not going to really significantly change the project. So I think that would be the concern that you'd spend public money and a considerable amount of it to, to likely, even if the study was accepted, to have no significant impact on the size of the project. But if council wants to direct us to go out and get a proposal to do this, we can do that. That's not a problem. There's at, least, at least proposal would be, you know, but, but even your premise that, you know, that poorly maintained dams means that all dams should be fixed is not a good solution. Why don't they go after the poorly maintained but, dams instead of going what they, blanket across the whole but state? Your, but our dam, <clears throat> although it is maintained well, what they're telling you is it doesn't have the capacity to be able to handle a storm of that magnitude. And I understand what you're saying because if, if, if you look at, and this is what I've presented to council before, the maximum rainstorm ever in the state of Pennsylvania, in Western Pennsylvania, is Hurricane Ivan. And in Hurricane Ivan, that, that spillway had no problem with that capacity. That was, I believe, six inches of rain in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. exactly. so, so I would agree with you, the chances of 
17 inches of rain in two hours is kind of mind-boggling. And as I've said to the council before, if we have 17 inches of rain in two hours, the least of our problems is going to be that dam. Absolutely. Well, Mike, I know my time's up. Do we know what it is designed to hold? What is the capacity it can hold? The maximum capacity of our current spillway? It measured as what? It measured rain in, rain in a fixed time period. Yeah, I mean, what what can what is it designed to handle right now? I mean, it's it it can handle like a little less than 3,000 cubic feet per second. The design storm, the 17.5, is almost 12,000 cubic feet per second. So it's, you know, it's only like 20% adequate, put it that way. I can't, I can't match it to a design storm because they're all different durations. But, and but the storm that we talk about as having been Ivan was six inches in 24 hours, and I personally was standing there, and it was not right. threatening could, at all. So you could handle four inches in two hours. Not necessarily. You know, I mean, right. you know, three and a half, four inches, which which we haven't seen that either, ever. And there's no way we can argue that because I mean, obviously, when the dam was built, when Pennsylvania American Water built it, the state had to sign off on it, right? No, it's this was built. Well, was it built? There, so there was never any state. Water. This dam goes back. No, uh, this dam goes back as a water reservoir into the 30s. Well, when so, it was built, there did the state have to sign off on it? I. Yeah, I would back I mean, in when the are there some argument? God only knows what the regulations well, are. Well, my argument is whether we could argue that it's grandfather to something. Yeah, it just seems hard to believe that they can just come in and say, you know, fix it, even well, though there's nothing I mean, wrong with it. Most, I don't say most, I mean, a lot of the high hazard dams were built before there was any regulations. They're not grandfathering anything. It's basically, because we really didn't have a problem until 10 years ago, until we got the initial letter. It was like, hey, based on current regulations, your dam is, you know, your spillway is inadequate. So they're... They're not looking at grandfathering anybody in. They're just looking at the current regulations. But you're, you're looking to spend four to seven million dollars. A, a study is is like a small investment to try to avoid that. And, and again, I haven't heard any much talk about the the aquatic center. Why would we be moving forward with the aquatic center when we have an expense like this hanging over our heads? So I, you know, I'd ask that you consider this before you move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the audience? Yep. Hi, uh, Christina Romano, 66 Stanford Drive. Um, I have a question about the um, Hartley Homes plan, the Rhine Home plan that's supposed to go in over at Sienna Woods. Um, there was some plans on, I, I know there was some um, people who came to the earlier and you said that there's going to be more public um, commentary and stuff, public hearings about it. But I, you know, I'm concerned because I live around the corner, and I coming out of Venetia Road, going on from Great Meadows onto Venetia Road, I have to look both ways like four times before I can pull out because car speed, there's tractor trailers, school buses, it's not a safe street. And the green space that was proposed for this plan is supposed to be across Venetia Road from the actual plan in Santa Woods, and I know. Some suggested that was not likely going to be approved, but they've, I noticed that they've started construction. Yeah. The update, she's talking about a plan that has been filed. It's called the Woodbrier Plan. Um, they're back at the drawing board. They're, they've met with the township. Uh, there's traffic studies underway. They've determined that turning lanes are needed. So it's in a full redesign uh, before it'll come to planning commission. Mm -hmm. And we'll notify the neighborhood again on when a new plan is resubmitted, and we'll put that plan on the website. What you see happen happening across the street is a totally unrelated project that okay. uh, we'll be discussing tonight. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other audience comments? Okay, seeing none. Looks like there's no unfinished. You business. got one more. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, I just have a question. The plan we're discussing. Can you just say your name and address and also write it down? Oh, yeah, yeah. Michael Camp 108 from the name. I just have a question. The plan we're discussing is a Hartman plan. I don't I defer to add on it. A Hartman Homes plan or a Ryan Homes plan? We were told initially that it would be a Heartland Home plan, but that has not been locked in or finalized. 
I just had a question. I believe Mr. Ross, do you work for, for Harlan Homes? I run Harlan Homes, yes. Okay. That would be working for, I guess. Do you want it? Same however thing, you, yeah. However you figure your ego gets stroked by saying it the right way, I assume you'd recuse yourself? <laughs> yes, I would. All right. Thank you. That's all I had to ask. You're more than welcome. Anybody else? Okay. So I said there's no in unfinished business, so under new business, the first item will be approval of uh, professional services for auditing. Uh, the township, um, every three years, um, solicits proposals for, for auditing services. Um, um, three firms requested a copy of the request for proposals. Two firms submitted the proposals. Um, one of the reasons why I think you get so few uh, proposals. Uh, actually, there's two reasons. One, um, the township participates uh, in the Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. There's only really two firms in town who work with municipalities and produce uh, reports of that nature. One is Hozak and the other is Mark Dussel. Um, our fees for auditing services are well below that which are paid by similar communities who, who also produce um, uh, financial reports of this nature. And I think for that reason, Mara Dussel uh, chooses not to, uh, to bid on these. It's, uh, I concur with Mr. Jorowski's recommendation to council where to contract to Jose Quick and Wood for auditing so services. So moved. Second. Okay, motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carry seven nothing. Next will be a word of the purchase of a cardiac monitor and the federal under the Pennsylvania Coast SARS program. So the 2022 budget as amended includes an appropriation of forty thousand dollars for the purchase of a cardiac monitor defibrillator. The purchase is principally being funded by a thirty-seven thousand dollar grant received by the township from the state fire commissioner's office in March of 2022. The purchase price is $39,966.82. And this includes uh, an allowance for the, for a trade-in of an existing unit. So it's my recommendation that the township award a contract to Zold Medical Corporation for $39,966.82 under the Pennsylvania Co-Stars program. So moved. Second. A okay, motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Carry seven nothing. Item C will be award of you know, the Coast Stars program for these vehicles. Yeah. And this is something that we normally would not be doing, but given the situations right now with the delivery of, of vehicles and the uh, proposed increase in cost, um, <coughs> this is a purchase that would actually fall under the 2023 budget. We know that, in fact, we will be purchasing two vehicles next year. Um, when um, Chief Grimes was gathering information for the 2023 budget, um, a representative from Laurel Ford indicated that he he has uh, 2022 models coming in that they'll and that they'll be approximately eight thousand dollars less than what the models will each. be in 20. Yes, each. I so, like, so you want to buy you want to buy them now? I want to buy them now, but but um, they don't impact the budget because we use modified accrual accounting, which only recognizes expenditures when checks are issued. So they're going to hold these vehicles, and in January we will purchase them, right. and they'll be part of I, that. I'm going to make a motion that we. Uh, we award the contract under the CoStars program uh, for these two uh, police uh, vehicles. Okay. I I was a little confused about the manager's report showing the, the price being forty two five, but the contract being sixty eight one. Is that well? The the, the price is forty two five. If we were to wait till next year, okay. So we're locking it in. We're the locking price it in now. now. Okay. Buying the twenty twenty two. These going to be okay. I, what are black uh, cars? I presume. I have no idea what's coming off the uh, the truck, so I don't know that. And you know, before I would before it. council votes, by one in another municipality I represent, that we purchased the truck through CoStars. And we just got a increase over the bid amount from the dealer, and went to CoStars and said, so "It's up to you." They weren't holding the price, so I'm not sure if we can do something in any contract. To though that will be a contract that stipulates a price, okay. so because they won't hold it, and even though we went through CoStars and we got the bid through them, they increased. It wasn't them; their contractor increased the price. 
Well, I, I make the motion that we do that, but that we could make sure that it, there's no surcharge going down the road. Okay. Okay. Whoever, I don't know who seconded it. I did. You still did it? Yes. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 7 nothing. Let's see what's next. The author, authorization of an appropriate township official to execute a contract with Pennsylvania American Water to extend the water line on Newdow Road. Yes, on June 13th, uh, council meeting, council engaged in a discussion concerning extending the water line along Bebout Road for the purpose of making water service available to three homes and also for the purpose of placing a fire hydrant at the end of the, uh, uh, the terminus of that line. The consensus of the council was to move ahead with that. And so before council tonight is a Pennsylvania American Standard water line extension agreement and under the terms of the agreement pennsylvania water will be assuming fifty five thousand four hundred forty dollars of the project cost peters township is assuming thirty one thousand eight hundred and nineteen dollars and it's my recommendation that we approve the contract so move second, second. you guys did you guys look at the yeah look at it yeah, right. I, I, I yeah. Mm -hmm. all right any further discussion on that all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed Nothing. Where this water line would go is in the area of this new rotary we're going to have constructed yes. at the crossing of Bebout and the yes. trail. We talked about that in connection with, the, with right. that. Right, and, and this will move ahead uh, before the, um, the roundabout is constructed. Just out of curiosity, how much would it cost to run a stub up to the Montour Trail so we could put a fountain there? I was just because that's about a mile away from the, the oh, closest. I, I don't know that, but uh, that's something that could be accommodated. I, I we, mean, have, we can do that. We have after. water right there, right further that, down. A little bit further down. It's yeah. not that far away. It's about a mile. Away. It has that little doggy dish on right. the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. But we could look at that once that water lines in. Okay. The possibility of that. Yeah. All right. Next slide will be authorization to uh, enter a lease agreement with new singular wireless. Uh, PCS for selling cellular communication yeah, power and, to Petersburg Park. And I was all set to tell council to move ahead with this, and, and I need some direction from council. But under the terms of this agreement, um, uh, new singular wireless, which is AT&T, um, will have an option uh, for the purposes of executing the lease, and, and in, in exchange for that, they're paying the township $1,000. There's no question they're going to exercise the option. They've been engineering this in conjunction uh, with the negotiations for doing this. But what they're going to be what they're going to be doing is installing a 90-foot cell tower in uh, in this location. That's now, at the end of the football field. At right? the end of the yeah. football field. Yeah. So to put this in perspective, the towers that are on, currently on the football field are 70 feet. The way, if you go up to the soccer field, they're 80 feet. One thing about this, this because of what the weight of that's being attached to this, this will be a much beefier uh, pole than, than those. But um, uh, the other thing that they're going to do is um, uh, they're going to attach to it um, lighting which will light that practice field for football uh, in the past uh, the football associations come in with portable lighting to light that field so that they can use it for practice so the value of that's about forty thousand dollars and then in addition to that uh, they'll be paying two thousand dollars a month uh, in, in uh, as a lease payment and they're also going to cover the attorney's fee our attorney's fees for having drafted this agreement my only concern is that, and, then, and it's the reason why this hasn't come to council earlier, this pole is tall enough that it can accommodate two carriers. And so AT&T isn't the only carrier in town. And uh, we spent a lot of time making sure that the pole could physically accommodate that. Um, we finally uh, had an opportunity to sit down with the people from Verizon and I explained to them this opportunity and their reaction was we'll never be on that pole because AT&T is going to make it impossible for us to be there. So I, I guess my question to you is you know, do you want to move ahead with this or do you want me to see whether or not we can find a way to make sure that both carriers can be on that pole? I, I think you need to do that because yeah. I certainly don't want Verizon then coming in 
building another 90 foot tire someplace else on the township property. Well, and, and that was the first thing out of the Verizon representatives. <laughs> well, you have other sports lighting poles there. We can put another pole in and, and, and we can be on that. And I told her that's not even a possibility. I don't think we wanna wanna do that in multiple locations inside the park. No, so I mean, with that in mind, I, I'm gonna suggest that you table this I'll and make then a motion we'll come back with it. it. Okay, so there's a motion for a table. I'll second. Okay, I, I just have one other question on this. Why are they crossing Broody to then cross Meredith? Why don't they just run it on the, I guess it'd be the western side and avoid that crossing and just cross? Because they're, they're getting to power is what, what this is. Uh, <clears throat> They've got to get power and they got to get telecommunications to this. So is there, so a, is there a line that's running then on that <clears throat> eastern side of Meredith? There's a, yes. Okay, all right, makes sense. So hey, Paul, the, the, the I'm, I'm sorry, Allison. That's go okay. Go. Oh, no, go ahead. All right. I just had a question about that rental payment. And I, I know I read this, but it's $2,000 a month, right? Mm -hmm. Is that for the in perpetuity? It's $2,000 a month. It escalates by 2% each year. That's an escalation. Yeah. Cost. And um, it's um, a five year contract with automatic renewals to take it out to 20. Okay, so. thank you. But, and that's actually a question I have for council. If in fact we can work out these other things, is this, a, is, is this an arrangement that you're, you're comfortable with? Yes, yeah. well, absolutely. Would Verizon give you more since they're not giving the 40,000 in lights and they're not building it? You would, you would get, I would anticipate you'd get the same lease agreement with, with Verizon. I would argue in, uh, in addition that they would make a capital contribution to the township for recreational purposes since they're avoiding $40,000 in the lights. Um, the hang up is what AT&T requires of them to be on their pole because that pole alone uh, will cost um, $100,000 to install. And so you know AT&T wants to get some of that back. I, I just tell AT&T we're not gonna do this unless they get Verizon involved because they've already laid out a lot of money. You just said, right? They're not going to. They're not going to like flush that down the toilet. I just tell them we're not doing it unless we get another carrier on there. I'd be quick to call your car well, on that one. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. We got to walk the fine line because we got such bad cell service in the yeah. township. You don't want to. And I just think if you, I, I think if you give me the next three weeks, we will we'll, we'll, we can see what we can do. I mean, this can't be you know a unique occurrence. There have to. You know, you would think that the two companies have worked together in the past, but you can't tell me that. Uh, all over the country. You know, yeah. But what you see them on you know, on multiple polls more often than not are, are when you have uh, providers like Crown Communication who's, who, who isn't AT&T or isn't Verizon, and then everybody stacked on those polls. So why are we, are we talking to them, Crown? If, yeah. if this isn't going to be a possibility, that's the route we're going to go. Because then the other thing is, is like the softball fields, I know it's it would be two poles in Pizzo Park, but they could light the softball fields, which would be an added benefit to that area that I know that they've been in need for. If oh. Just say like Verizon wouldn't go on the AT&T pool. But what you're talking about, the light this fields is an entirely different and larger expense than what mm -hmm. you're talking about here. Okay. And you're going to see that very shortly because you know we're looking at the possibility yeah. of relamping the baseball field. So, okay. what is the circumference like area that that pole will get out to? Like how how many miles? Because I I, I don't know, know the answer to that question, but I could find I'm out. I'm curious because if it only is going to be a certain area, I mean. Can we do it another one on the other side of town? Well, one of the things that has been suggested to me is uh, from AT&T is that this tower would address the problem at the waters. So that gives you some idea of how far away that that reaches. Mm -hmm. But, but it, it, I could tell you if we can identify other locations that everybody's happy with, I think, you know, all of these places. Areas that kind yeah. of over, you know, yeah, it still doesn't help East McMurray where the high school is and where um, middle school. a lot of the schools are. Yeah. And that was the discussion with AT&T's committed to doing something along there. That was the discussion with Verizon, the need to do something along there. They understand that now. They're to get back to us. Okay. Yeah. I right, so have a motion on the Florida table in a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, it's tabled. 
Next item will be approval for recording purposes of a Grice plan number three. As council may recall, on February 28th, um, uh, there was a, a departure granted from our regulations with regard to improving the streets uh, once a subdivision occurs. Um, council concluded that based upon the fact that there were no new lots created and that the lots that were being created were all held by a single family. Um, so what you have in front of you tonight is actually approval of, of that subdivision. The one thing that I believe uh, and would recommend that we should do, uh, there were two conditions that were placed upon that approval, one of which was completed by virtue of, of the fact that um, they needed to work with the sanitary authority. But the second uh, was an indication that, that in the future this departure did not uh, necessarily cover um, uh, a subsequent subdivision of these lots. And so I just think that that note should be on the plan so that everybody's aware of that. I, I would think it should be clarified such that if they split off a parcel, an acre for a child, that they're not going to be locked into a six-figure road improvement. I think that's ridiculous and too much to ask. And, and they aren't necessarily, but what it means is they have to come back for a departure from the regulation again. It isn't like this way that you granted a departure that no matter what happens down there, that you never have to improve that street. So what you're suge suggesting is exactly what they would need to do. They would need to have to come back in and get a departure. Well, just like we would ask any other right. landowner in, in that mm -hmm. type of situation. Yeah, see, I, I mean, I still look at it as it seems like they're being penalized because they're not sell, selling off the property for mass development. I would think we would write something along the lines of if, it, if there's a master plan submittal for full scale development, they maybe want to put the road in. But I, I just can't see them coming back and forth if they want to give a kid a, an acre. I, that's my opinion. I, I don't think it's necessary that verbiage or I think it should be. Tailored to well, if they wanted situation. to subdivide one of the lots and to, for like for an acre or somebody like a family member, I mean they'd have to come here, right? Right. And I mean, and and the the, the position would be, how could you take the position that you know we're going to let you do this acre, but you're going to have to pay to improve all exactly. that, right? And, and yeah, I'm not that's not the way that. I read it, though. The way I read it is that this departure only applies to this subdivision, and if they right. come back, they're not they're not guaranteed the protections of the departure. It doesn't say that they necessarily won't get the protections of the departure. Right. What it just says is that the departure only applies to this subdivision. I wouldn't want that kind of uncertainty hanging over my head if I own that property. Yeah, but that's just like anybody else that has yes, a lot. That, that, they want to come in and, and subdivide yeah, a lot. When, when you built your house, did they make your dad put in a multi, several hundred thousand dollar road? I mean, I know it's, it's apples and oranges. No, but I was only creating one new lot. Well, I'm saying in the future, if they only create one new lot, why would we potentially subject them to that? But we do that to every property owner, Gary. Subject them to putting I in mean, a, I mean, a, a when, road that... When was the last time that we did a plan where, you know, we, we gave relief and we said that that relief applies permanently moving forward? I mean, I see what you're saying. I mean, I, I see how you're reading it. And... You know, if you put 20 lawyers in a room, 10 of them would read it the way you're reading it, 10 of them would read it the way I'm reading it. That's what's good for business. But um, you got more engineers than lawyers. Well, you know. that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah, we're outnumbered. There we are. Rare occurrence when you have a room with this many people. We, I mean, I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I mean, I just can't believe that any future council would like look at that and say they want to give an acre to you know this per you know son daughter whatever and we're going to force them to like upgrade this i just don't see that happening well, plus i i think it, it i think the way frank is reading it is it, it is like the whole subdivision right? it's not that just like right. one lot right right if the subdivision plan is revised or if a future subdivision plan is proposed that creates any new lots, then Section 385-37A1 Street General Standards of Subdivision will apply. Which is the case in, would be the case in any subdivision you did. Right. Right. I, I think it's okay. I'm trying to think if there's a way we could word it to, you know, make it. Yeah. It's, I, I mean, I... 
I don't, I don't see it as ambiguous. I mean, I, like I said, I see exactly the way you're reading it, Gary, and I can see how someone can read it that way. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a big expense. I didn't know this going to be like an issue. Now, I would pay to more attention to the results and what we would require. Where is that language? Uh, Condition one. Still looking for it. It's, it's oh, wasn't the it? Wasn't it? Frank. Yes. <laughs> in here? Uh, yeah. Page it's in the manager's report. report. Was it? A, was it a recommendation? Oh, the management report. Yeah. Did the planning commission agree was, to that as well? It was, was a recommendation to the planning commission to council when the departure was made. It was the well, conditions man. were were attached to the departure when council granted the departure. Yeah, I don't have that. Document. The, the manager's report? I was, oh, I'm sorry. It was. I'm, I apologize. I didn't realize it, it was on the dance. I'm sorry. Let me take a look at that line. Let's just quick. So it's so which one is it? The number one. Number one. The subdivision plan. I think the other concern might be that the Planning Commission is expecting that that rule be applied in the future, the way that condition is written, potentially. That, that section that is referenced there, 385.37, is unimproved private roads, subdividing on those types of roads. Yeah. So anyone subdividing on a private road, not improved to township specs, is subject to that Section of the so then if that's the case, why do we even need it? Because if they do come in and sub, I mean, unless section three, unless that section were to be, you know, taken out of the of the code, then it's, it's going it to applies. apply anyway, right? It applies. Has there been a similar instance in the past 12 years? I, I don't recall anything like this. Not as long as I've been here. I mean, how many times do we do subdivisions off of private roads? Does it happen Quite a few often? times. What's that? I think it's happened a few times. I'm trying not, to. Not a lot. We just did the Tomahawk plan up of, up of uh, Moccasin. But there, the developer was creating six lot, lots, and he had to improve that private gravel road to township specifications. That's a. So that's a and without that regulation, he would not have been required to right, do but, that. But that's the argument that I'm making is we're talking developer versus a family. Yeah, but we so can't. I'd like to see yeah, but Gary, somebody who can put a distinction in there. We can't treat a family, man. I mean, we can't treat a private individual subdividing land any different than we do a developer. How about if we just take out the second sentence and we say the modification approval only applies to a proposed subdivision either as shown or revised that results in no additional lots being created? Then the ordinance speaks for itself. Yeah, they come I, that's in, not a problem. And then whatever the ordinance is, and if they ever come back in, that's what they have to live with. So moved as amended. Second. I know. I think the landowners. Do you guys want to speak to this at all? So, if, I if you could come to the podium, that's right. Sure. You have to come up to the microphone and sign in. Just say your name. Really um, I guess the concern is Gary's right in the fact that this is all family property. And we have no plans ever to subdivide this and build multiple homes. In the future, if one of the grandkids wanted to build a house there, we would come in and ask for a Another variance to put a you know an acre lot within that subdivision, but you know we we're, we have no plans of ever selling to a developer. This property has been in, in our family for six generations, and as a matter of fact, uh, last year when my wife's uncle passed away, we bought that property and Karina decided to move the Bolton. We didn't want that property being sold to some 
uh, member of you know, somebody outside of the family. So we want that property to belong to us. Right now, the house is vacant, but you know, we didn't want that to be sold to someone outside. We want to keep that 40 plus acres within the family. And I don't foresee that ever changing. So, but, you know, if one of the grandkids want to build a house there, we're, we're going to be limited now on how we do that. Well, yeah, it could be <coughs> potentially putting in, like I said, easily you're in the six figures. I, mean, to bring I, I have no idea what, what, what a road cost, but I'm sure it's yeah, going to be our means. If the township wants to come in and do it, you know, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't think we, we, we would have the right anyway to grant you what would essentially be a perpetual departure to say that you could come in, you know, let's say 15 years from now you got six grandkids, you know, each one an acre. Yeah. And each come in, you know, and you're going to come in and create six new lots, and then we have waived any requirement to make you improve the road. You know, I mean, that's the other you know, side I, of it. I understand all that, and um, it's right now. You know, we, we uh, there's five families that live there, and we don't expect that many to to live there. But I can't say that they won't. I mean, right now there is an empty house. So one of the grandkids could live into that house. So. I don't. I don't think that we're creating any particular harm. I just in don't this like a, a specific restriction in there that says if you're going to subdivide one more time, you got to build. You got to build a road that leads up uh, down to but, And that's, that's not what it says. We're not saying that. No. But I don't think it takes it off the table either. I mean, clearly, if we're going to subdivide, we got to come back to you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. there a, did somebody make a motion? I did. Yes. I think somebody second. Right? I did. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. For the sake of moving it forward, I'll vote in favor of it. But I, I definitely disagree with it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. And thank Sir, you. You may have noted there was a modification to that motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we got the language down? Yeah. We, we, we've got it because it's on the. Got it. Some, some of it was, in fact, changed. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, item G will be setting a date for congestion. We use public hearing for uh, station warehouse located on Venetia Road. Yes. Um, so warehouses and that. Uh, zoning district or conditional use. Um, this is going to be in front of the uh, Planning Commission um, next month. What I'm recommending is that we set uh, Monday, September 26th at 7.30 for a public hearing for this conditional use. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? We, we did one down there before, didn't we? Never got built. Oh, we never got built. That was the one A and S. That was A and S. Yeah, they right. never built it. They never did. No. But this is the yeah. location where the dirt was moved. Yeah. They jumped the gun a little bit. They they got the topsoil stripped and are stockpiling it there. And oh. Everything is stocked. Okay. Beaver, beaver. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion. I think we have a motion. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, item H will be a resolution amending the Planning Commission Act of 537 sewage facility plan to access, uh, for sewage access to 161 Proby Road. Yeah, this is a very difficult situation. Um, uh, Peter and Kathy Schumacher own a home at 161. Proby Road. That home is in the Peters Township Sanitary Authority watershed. There is not a sanitary sewer anywhere near the vicinity of it. In fact, the closest sanitary sewer sits in Peterswood Park and is about 2,000 feet away. That uh, house has up to this date been serviced with an on-lot system. When they, they entered into a sales agreement to sell this house in May, and when they did a test of, this, of the on-lot system, it failed. And not only did the system fail, there's nowhere else on the lot to place an on-lot system. So their only way uh, to handle this is either with a tank, which is not something we'd ever want to see, or 
um, to pump the sewerage into the Peters Creek watershed. So at this location, um, there is a manhole that would allow that to occur. The Peters Creek Sanitary Authority um, has taken action to permit that connection to be made. Uh, normally, I would not be bringing planning modules to you that aren't complete, but these aren't, and they're in the process of completing them. So what I'm asking council to do is to approve the planning modules, subject to review by the township staff to make sure that they're complete, so that in fact the homeowner can move ahead with um, with uh, addressing this with a grinder pump and a force main to that location. Um, that line's going to sit inside of our, uh, that private line's going to sit inside of our right of way. That's something that we don't normally do, um, but we're going to enter into agree with it with the homeowner and the and their successors in terms of its maintenance. But as of right now, you've got a home that's several hundred thousand dollars that's sitting vacant that can't be sold. So where's the connection going to be, Paul? Yeah, you it's said there's a manhole. Where's it's going to be down in here. Hold on one second. It's it's going to be down in here. It's either down on this down at this location or there. I think there's a manhole that comes out somewhere down here. So they're going to have to dig up the street, or are they going underneath? They're going to they're going to have to bore underneath. under the street. I'm assuming, right? Yeah. I mean, I I don't think they'll go in the pavement. They'll probably either excavate a shallow trench outside of the pavement or bore. You know, when they do the crossing, they'll definitely have to bore under it. But it's all, it all depends on where existing utilities are. They're going to have to avoid gas and water, so. Yeah. This well, is, what about those other houses? How, what kind of sewage do they have? Well, um, this is kind of interesting because what, uh, th what this is, is um, this is Froby Farm. Okay. This is Meredith doing. Drive. Yeah. All these houses that are off Meredith Drive, mm -hmm. they're all in the Peters Creek Sanitary Authority, or at least a portion of their mm -hmm. lots in the Peters Creek Sanitary Authority. So if and when this development moves forward, all of these lots will be picked up um, and sewered that in that direction. That's you said that's Peters Creek on that side? Of Peters Creek, the, the, the uh, watershed breaks somewhere back in here. So they fall the other way is what you're saying, yep. as opposed to this side. They flow the other way. Right. Yeah. This one flows back towards Peters Township Sanitary. Well, I mean, I don't see how we can deny these people. I mean, the only concern I have is make sure that whatever easement you set up with them has an identification clause in case, you know, they blow up a gas line or something like that while they're digging their trench. Well, and the other thing we're going to insist upon, although I don't know when public sewers that it would ever come up that way, that if there ever is gravity flow, that they be required to connect, so. Somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the, what's the resolution number, Paul? Resolution. Uh, you know what? I'll get you the, I don't have I don't that. think it has one. I don't see one. I'll make a motion we approve re resolution number to be inserted amending the Peters Township Act 537 sewage facility plan so as to provide access to sewage services for 161 for Ovi Road. Second. Okay, we're motion to second. Any further discussion? Audience, Jim? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carry seven nothing. Uh, last item will be resignation from the parks and rec. Move we accept Brittany Smith's resignation <coughs> with regrets and thank her for her service. She will be missed. Our loss is certainly the gain of the state of Texas. Second. Okay, motion is second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. And we are in the process of accepting applications. <coughs> we have a number of them already. So if anybody's interested in applying for that position, do we, we have people that we recently interviewed as well. Are you going to reach back out to them? To I don't know that we have uh, for the Park and Rec Board uh, anybody who who is sitting out there. But well, I'm saying um, other boards. I think we had the Library Board. We had a few people yeah. that said that they'd be interested. Right. Okay. I'll check with Tom to make sure. Okay, payroll and bills. Mr. Chairman, I've reviewed the payroll and bills. Find them to be in order. I move they be approved as submitted. Second. Second. Okay, motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, seven nothing. Correspondence, just a notification from EQT. Anybody have any questions about that? 
And the other piece of correspondence is that I wanted to get to you is uh, from uh, Mr. Ford, that there's a copy of it uh, regarding the police department. Okay. Uh, reports, anything anybody wants to discuss? I just have a question. I was looking at the police report. Um, I was noticing like 56 assaults this year, 28 larceny. You know, when you compare the prior year, six, five, like what's what's been happening this year that we have so many assaults, larcenies? There's, there was another number that was just... I, I can't five. answer that question, but I can have the chief come and explain that. Yeah, just numbers aren't even close to what they were prior year, so that would there's be... There's been a lot of, sorry, there's been a lot of um, break-ins. There have been break-ins uh, in the township. Um, and uh, the most recent, they've actually been able to identify the vehicle that was used, and they're working back to the owner of that. So that's encouraging. Okay. Yeah, but to all the residents listening out there, when you leave home, make sure your doors are locked. If you have a security system, turn them on. Because from what I've heard, a few of these break-ins, the people had security systems and didn't turn them on. So yeah. put a light on. If you have a security system, turn it on. I also heard that they, it was locked and they broke the door and the security yeah. was blaring away. They just ran and grabbed and took off. Oh, there's no question they're professionals yeah. because they, they know they've got like three minutes between when the alarm goes off and the police show up and they get their stuff and they get out. But. Anything else on the reports? Okay, miscellaneous, we have our township tour on Monday. Yep, Monday that's, the 29th, 5 o'clock. That's, that's open to the public as well, right? Anybody that wants to join along? I know Mr. Books has in the past. Um, if we have room on the bus, that we can accommodate people. The other two things that are miscellaneous that I wanted to point out to you is um, Stephanie uh, Yurchik, although she's not a township resident, uh, she is a member of the McMurray Rotary Club. And she's been chosen to be the president of Rotary, Rotary International. And so she'll be serving in that, in that capacity in 24, 25, which is kind of amazing for the small club to have the international president come out of it. The other, the other one I wanted to point out to you is um, Allison Risk was here last week. Uh, she's been chosen for uh, the Hall of Fame class for the uh, US Tennis Association's Middle States. Um, Allison, uh, started her tennis career here in Peters Township. Um, she's been ranked as high as um, 18th in the world. And I think it was kind of uh, interesting that when they were going to do a promotional video that they're going to show at her award ceremony, she chose to have that done here at the township. So we're going to get a copy of that and we're going to share that with, with others. So. Okay. Anything on the next agenda? I uh, had Ryan pass out a little uh, summary I put together of what I would envision the junior council person program being. So if all of you could take a look at that and let me know your thoughts in the next couple of weeks, see if we can get moving forward with that. Okay. Okay. Gary, I have a... Yeah. <clears throat> I wanted to take an opportunity to, to thank the school district for the public viewing of the new high school. I uh, have to tell you that I've been up there a couple times. I was uh, particularly enjoying the opportunity to talk to uh, three of the high school students I found to be excellent guides and uh, kind of reassuring as to what some of our young people are that I don't get to see. But I was disappointed in one element in their large group instructional room. They have two small American flags and I would like to uh, propose that council offer as a gesture of uh, thoughtfulness, I guess, um, that we purchase a flag similar to what we have over here and donate it to the school for the large group instructional line. I looked online and they looked like they would run in the range of two or three hundred dollars. Um, but I'd ask council if anyone else would go along with the idea that. Uh, that gesture and gratitude for the effort that they put into to making that building and the district what it has become uh, surely appreciated. I don't have a problem with Absolutely. Okay. We should send them a housewarming gift. <laughs> Does the township um, or is it the school district, any type of signage on McMurray Road, will there ever be like any official signage? 
one of the things we talked about on the project and 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 it's, it was put on the back burner and I, it probably makes sense to, to do this now the, the thought was that there should be some type of uh, substantial sign that greets you to let you know that you're coming into the space where there is a uh, high school and a community park and that it be not only on the East McMurray side, but it'd be on the uh, center church side as well. So well, I think the problem is it got way out of control, the cost and scope of what was put forth. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if we need to probably yeah. should look at that again, but maybe scale back expectations. Maybe. Look for donations. Well, that weren't they, they originally they were talking about putting the electronic marquee down there, right? But then it got, there was some issue with conduit or something like that. I don't know. I didn't. But then we had designs, right? We were going to build like the basic brick signs with Yes. The, yes. But I don't know whether that would still, because as I recall, that was before we relocated the roads down there. So I don't know. But then, if and like, that's part of the reason why that that didn't move forward. But we can we can look at that again. Maybe Verizon can pay for it. Mm -hmm. Anything else for the next agenda? Okay, next we have a. Uh, do we have an executive yes, session? Yes, we do. Okay, yes. and then we'll go we into the workshop. workshop. Will that be here or in the? Oh, we're going to do it here. Okay, so that's open to the public, right? Mm -hmm. But the executive session is not. That's great. Okay, meetings adjourned.